Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Easter Sunday morning at New Life Church here in Hatchet Lake, Nova Scotia. So glad that you have tuned in this morning. Uh, my name's Pastor Darren Millett, and really want to welcome you here this morning. Very excited about our time together, our service together. So, uh, so as we begin this morning, uh, wherever you may be uh, today, let's, let's begin with a word of prayer. Let's join in prayer together. Lord, we thank you. We thank you today uh, that we celebrate uh, a, a tomb that is empty, that Jesus has risen. And thank you so much uh, for all that that means for us. Uh, Lord, we, we come, uh, Lord, and just pray that you would open our minds, open our hearts to receive from you uh, as we participate in this service this morning. May all that's said, may all that's done be to your honor and glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Very excited for the fact that I am not going to be the only one on your screen this morning. And so we're going to begin this morning. So thankful for Rachel, who's uh, going to come and bring us, uh, bring us ministry and song this morning. Thank you, Rachel. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Jesus Christ, who has resurrected. 
corrected me. Hey, thank you, Rachel. That was awesome. Uh, normally, if we were together on an Easter Sunday morning, we would be taking an opportunity to use, to use this. This is our floating mic, our portable mic, and we use this when we open things up uh, to hear from you what Easter means to you, to bring greetings, to bring something that, that, that maybe God has been doing uh, in your life or in your family's life, and, and, and we get the benefit of hearing that. Um, we're still going to do that this morning. We don't need this mic this morning, but many of you have submitted, have, have, have forwarded Easter greetings, have, have shared what Easter means to you, so we're going to watch these now. Uh, thanks so much. Hi there, Jan Frazier here. What does Easter mean to me? Future hope. Whether it's two seconds from now, or two months from now, or 10 years from now, or a lot farther in the future. If you have Jesus, there is always hope. I love you and miss you all, bye. Hello. Hello. Easter means redemption to me. And to me it's the reason for hope. What do you, do? Uh. What do you think Dominic, what's Easter to you? Can you wave? If you're not going to say anything, can you wave hello? Can you wave hello? No? <laughs> Easter to me is a time of hope. I feel more hope during the Easter season than any other time of the year. I just want to say that I um, miss my family at New Life very, very much. I miss doing life together with you. I miss the encouragement. I miss the support that we offer each other. I miss Pastor Darren's teaching. I miss how he watches and cares over us week after week. I miss the worship team. I miss each one of you. I'm really looking forward to the time that we can gather together at our church on Sunday mornings. And until that time, I hope that you all keep well and keep safe. I wish you all a very blessed Easter. Blessings to you. Hi, New Life. What does Easter mean to me? Easter is a time of celebration. It is family and friends, but it's also celebrating the gift of salvation that God gave us through his son dying on the cross. It's also a time of new beginnings. I just found some new beginnings. Hello, friends. Uh, what Easter means to me. Easter is God's love to me, expressed in his sending his son, Jesus, to pay a debt he did not owe because I owed the debt and I could not pay it. Thank you, Jesus. Happy Easter. Good morning. Easter to our family means the fulfillment of God's promise to us. Hi, New Lifers and Pastor Darren. To me, Easter means Jesus conquered the grave. That has always been an awesome meaning to me. 
Um, miss you all. Love you all. See you soon. Good morning. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. What I like the most about Easter is just the uh, promise of new life. How things look so bleak and desperate on Good Friday, but how God turned that around in victory Easter morning. Victory over death, victory over brokenness, victory over shame. And uh, the promise that uh, for those who believe in him, he will do the same in your life and in my life. So um, victory and the promise of new life. Um, God bless. Have a great Easter. Uh, take care and be well. Hi, I'm Helen from New Life. If you're an oldie like me, you probably grew up singing that old hymn, Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever for his saints to reign. Hallelujah, Christ arose. That's the message today. Jesus isn't in the grave, he's alive and well and he loves each and every one of us. Blessings to you on this Easter. I know it's a different time for celebrating, but it doesn't erase the fact Christ arose, he's alive, and he can live inside each of us if we only ask. Blessings on your Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Good morning. Good morning. We miss everybody. I'm just thinking of this season of renewed hope and renewed joy. And we just wish everybody that set sentiment. So have a happy Easter and hope to see you all soon. Stay well. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. Easter is all about his death on the cross and his resurrection to grant us new life. Hi friends at New Life, we love you, we just miss you. Uh, my f thing that I want to think about this Easter is the courage of Jesus and the example that he sets for us in being brave in the face of adversity. I think about God's grace demonstrated to us through his giving of his son. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Hi. So when I think of Easter, I think of the verse John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus died for us so that we could have eternal life with him in heaven someday. I miss you all, and I hope you all have a good Easter. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. I want to wish you a happy Easter from Prospect Bay. Happy Easter to all of you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hi, Mom and Dad. So this is take number three. Mom, I was just wondering if you could tell me what Easter means to you. Easter means to me hope. Nice. How about you, Dad? Hope and uh, time for reflection and a time to look forward. Sounds good. Hopefully we don't have to record it again. Bye. Bye. Happy Easter, everybody. Hi, church, Hi, church family. family. Easter means Jesus has risen, and so will we. We wish you a blessed and peaceful Easter from our house to yours. Love from us, Grace and Albert. Bye. You know, Easter for me, as I look back on Easter, uh, Easter for me every year, I, I think about the time, the time that I was baptized. As a, as a teenager, I was baptized and... And looking back, I didn't know much when I was baptized. And yet, that was a, that was a, really, pivotal, uh, that was a really pivotal thing. It was a, it was a very significant event, uh, I know, in my faith walk. And, and, and I, I say to people, if you've been thinking about baptism, if the thought has crossed your mind, don't disqualify yourself because you think you don't know enough. Um, I was in that space as well. I, I, I can relate. But you know, we're in these days where, where 
it feels like you don't know what a day is going to bring. And we're in this COVID crisis. And so maybe that has caused you to, to rethink, to reassess certain priorities. Maybe baptism is one of those things that has come to the surface once again. If that's you, I would just say, uh, just put a little plug in here. Uh, just, just let's talk. Uh, I'd love to talk to you more about it. But I'll, I'll use that as a segue here that you never know what a day is going to bring. And, 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 you know, talking about a season we didn't see coming. And so I want to start this morning with a quiz. Uh, with a quiz to see how much, how, much you're, um, how much you're following the news these days. And, and, and so uh, when, when, kids, when our kids were younger, uh, we, used to play, we used to play hangman. And so... Uh, um, you'd fill in the words to something. So if I put this up here, see who's been watching the news this week. Uh, stay blank blank home. Do you need a hint at what these two words might be? Um, here's the hint. Premier's uh, daily press conference. Okay, I think you know. So it's stay the stay the blazes home that's kind of been the phrase for this week and i don't know about you but uh, that makes me feel kind of like a proud nova scotian here uh kind of a proud moment that this this uh this phrase has become the 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 the, the viral phrase for this crisis this week and 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 we kind of go hey that's that was our premier. That was, that was our guy that came up with that phrase. And now there's, now there's T-shirts. Uh, now there's mugs. There's even songs. Um, all about stay the blazes home. And you think about that phrase. It's, it's, come, out of, um, it's come out of this phrase. It's come out of this reality that, that look, here's the truth. That we need to be staying home. We need to be keeping distance, physical distance from each other uh, if, this thing, if we don't want this thing to keep spreading like crazy. It, it's coming out of the truth that we need to stay isolated right now. And, and there's most, there's a vast majority of people that are doing that, and, and yet there's those few people that are going, that may be true, I, I don't care. We're just going to do what we do. Sometimes at Easter, we get very apologetic. I don't mean we go around saying I'm sorry all the time and apologizing. That's not what I mean by apologetic. I mean we get very apologetic. We get very, we, we get very logical about, about presenting all the proofs, all the reasons why Jesus, uh, uh, why we know Jesus rose from the grave, all the evidence, all the proofs that are there. And, 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 and that's great. Don't hear what I'm not saying. That is good stuff. In fact, um, if you want to know more about it, there's a couple great uh, apologists that you, could, that you could look up. Look up Lee Strobel. Look up William Lane Craig. Uh, their name's there on the screen. Excellent material on reasons why, reasons, reasons we know, evidence that Jesus rose from the grave. And, and there are so many reasons. The proof is compelling. And, 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 and yet there's still these skeptics that go, that go yeah, uh, Jesus probably did rise from the grave. It, there's, there's evidence, there's compelling evidence there, but, but I don't care. Uh, this, this doesn't really matter to me. And yet, and, yet, and yet much of the New Testament is focused on the fact that, 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 that we need to care. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't talk a lot about here's all the evidence, uh, here's all the details of how, Je how it all happened that Jesus rose from the grave, but it talks a lot about here's, here's why it matters. He, here's, here's what it means to you. Uh, maybe there's others there's others that go, that go, okay, Easter, Easter, yeah, oh, okay, I, I get it, I get it. Um, 
he, he died on Friday, alive on Sunday. Uh, Friday, Friday's dead. Sunday, he's back. And so you get it, but you don't get it. You, you're you're kind of in that space. You're, okay, I, I, I kind of get the, the general idea about it. But I get it, but you'd say you're in the process, in the process of getting it. You get it, and, and, and you don't. It's just kind of... It's just kind of theoretical. It's just kind of, it's just kind of abstract. Until, until you go to the doctor's appointment and the doctor calls you in and say, we've just got your test results back and this situation is not what we hoped for. And in fact, you'll be back tomorrow. We're bumping you to the front of the line. You're going to begin treatments right away tomorrow. Then then it's not so abstract. Then it's not so theoretical. Then it becomes something much more important, the resurrection and what it means. And, and going at that point, this, this, needs to, this needs to flood my mind. This needs to flood my understanding. And, and so this morning, we're going to be looking at what does the resurrection mean? Why is it important? Why is it so much at the, at the very center of, of Christianity? And, and so we're going to be looking at three reasons this morning. We're going to narrow it to three reasons why this is so foundational for us. We're going to be looking into Matthew chapter 28. We'll start there. So I'm going to invite you to, to turn in your Bibles. And we're going to start, we're going to start in at verse 1, Matthew 28. It goes like this, after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Now, now Jesus, was, Jesus was crucified on Passover day. It was 9 a.m. that he went on the cross, that he was, that he was nailed to the cross, and it was 3 p.m. that he died. Jesus died, Jesus died at, at, at 3 p.m., the exact time of the sacrifice, by the way, at the temple. So, so he dies at 3 p.m. Jesus has to be buried before sunset. He has to be buried before the start of the Sabbath. It, it says in Luke that there was a special Sabbath day. Now, days back then are not like days that we have today. Our, our days start in the morning. We get up in the morning. We start a new day. Their days started in the evening. It started at dusk. And, and, so, and so they only have a short time to bury Jesus. So, so, so a guy named Joseph of Arimathea, he comes and he asks for the body of Jesus. And, and, and he and, and a guy named Nicodemus, they take the body and, and, and they bury Jesus. They have him in the tomb in a short period of time. They bury him hastily. Keep going, verse 2. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Worth noting here. Just to notice, the stone was rolled back not to let Jesus out. The stone was rolled back to let the witnesses in. The stone was rolled back so people could see the tomb is empty. That's cool. Verse 3. His appearance, that's, that's, that's the angel, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Got to see the irony here. The irony here in verse 3 and 4. I need you to see the guards, the guards who are alive, it's their job to be guarding a dead man. And, and, and they become like dead men, and the dead man becomes alive. You see the irony there. Incredible irony. The, the guards who are alive now become like they're dead. The person who's dead now becomes alive. Which takes us to the first reason why the resurrection is so important. Reason number one we'll call new life. 
Jesus isn't resuscitated. He's not like, he's not like Lazarus, the guy who, who, who Jesus brought forth. Lazarus, come forth. Um, and, and he came forth. Lazarus, he was resuscitated, meaning, meaning there was a time when, when he, he died again. He, he died a second time. Jesus was resurrected. In fact, Paul describes, Paul describes Jesus as, as the first fruits of those who have been resurrected. Why is this important? Um, think back to, to Good Friday. Think back to the Friday, uh, to, to, to the teaching we did on Friday. We, we talked about why the cross is so important, and we talked about this, this great exchange. I give Jesus my sin. He gives me his his righteousness. It's this great exchange. His perfect life is credited to our account. It's credited to your account. So positionally, uh, just like that, just like that hymn goes, that, that we, are, we are clothed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Right? On Christ the solid rock I stand. Uh, clothed in his righteousness, faultless to stand before his throne. We're faultless because we have his righteousness, not our righteousness. And that is so cool. That's what we talked about on Friday. If you didn't see it, please go back and check that out. But there's even more here. There's more to the story here now. Look at this in, in Romans 6. This is a bit, um, this is a bit theological, a bit, a bit technical here, but let's Romans 6, verses 4 and 5. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Verse 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. In other words, we share in his resurrection. We share in it. This is this is the future hope that 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 Christ was the first fruit. He was the he, his resurrection body. He was the first. But the Bible tells us that 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 someday, so will we. So we'll share in that as well for ourselves. There's a time coming at the at the at, at the end of time where there's a new heaven and a new earth and we will have resurrection bodies like Jesus. Everlasting. Free from pain. Free from disease and, and free from, from viruses. With him for eternity. I, I'm believing that. I mean, like you, I, I've, got a, I, I've got a boatload of questions. That, that I have around that, but, but bottom line, the Bible says it, and I believe it, because the Bible says it. So why is the resurrection important? It's important, reason number one, there's new life. Uh, but let's go back to the text, and what we call reason number two, uh, we'll just call fear. N now remember, it's the two women who go, who are present at the tomb early that morning. They probably get up early to, to finish the, the, the burial preparations for Jesus. The spices, the, the things that they do there. Remember, he was hastily buried on, on, on Passover. So verse 5, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. In fact, further on down in verse 10, here in Matthew 28, we'll see the same phrase where Jesus says, do not be afraid. That command, do not be afraid, that is, that, that is the most repeated command in the Bible. This is, this is interesting. Do not be afraid. Do not live a life of all-consuming fear. Do not walk under this umbrella of fear all your life. Do not be afraid. Can I ask you, what are you afraid of? What, what are you afraid of? Is it possible? Is, is, is it possible that, that a life of fear 
is preventing you uh, from a life of joy, a life of peace, uh, from, a, from a life of freedom because you're bound in fear. You go, oh, well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not afraid of anything. I don't, I don't have any fear. Um, I don't sleep at night uh, because I'm thinking about everything and I'm, 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 I'm worried uh, a lot, but no, I'm not, I'm not afraid. <laughs> uh, you know, for, for some people, risk uh, definition of risk is a game and, 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 and they play risk but they're too afraid to play risk um, fear fear can, can, can grab us and fear can hold us down let's just brainstorm for a minute of things that we might be afraid of there's all kinds of things we might be afraid of but maybe may, maybe you're afraid of, of maybe you're afraid of being teased Maybe, maybe back when you were in junior high or, or, or high school that you were in a situation and, 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 and you were teased, you were mocked, and you made a pact at that point. You said, I will never be made fun of again. Maybe you're afraid of something to do with health. That, that, that's relevant today. Where, where uh, I don't want to, I don't want to catch something. What if I, what if I get this? What if I get this virus? What if, what if this medical report, this test, is what happens? Maybe your fear is based in health. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a relationship, a relationship fear. Uh, you're, you're uh, about a relationship that could go bad. About a relationship that could go, that could go south. Uh, maybe you're afraid of something financial. It's a financial fear. It's something that, 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 that what if the markets continue to plummet? What if, what if that retirement fund is not safe? Uh, maybe it's a fear, maybe it's a fear around aging. Uh, you don't necessarily fear dying, but you fear aging what if i get old and there's no one to look after me what am i going to do if there's nobody around how am i going to look after myself if these changes if these changes happen there can be there can be all kinds of fears i've just touched on a few but we have these fears and and and, 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 and what, if, what if the resurrected Jesus is saying to us, do not be afraid. I will be with you. We talked a few weeks ago, we talked about when, 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 when we worry, when we bring forward the worries, the things of tomorrow into today, then, then doing that steals, robs us of the joy of the day. There are some things, there are some things I believe Jesus says, I only wanted you to experience this once. And, and when we worry, when we, when, we, when we bring all of tomorrow's troubles into today, we're experiencing them more than once. Do not be afraid when fear takes the place of trust then we are in that place that 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 we need to that we need to surrender that we're in that place where our joy where our peace is being is being robbed and and so so now back to the story i'd like for us to flip over to john's account uh, John's account of the resurrection, which is in, which is in John chapter 20, uh, to, to continue to look at Mary here, because at this point, Mary, Mary is becoming undone. Mary here at, 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 the, at the gravesite is becoming undone. Matthew 20, looking at verse 11, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? 
They have taken, away, taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Takes us to part three, third reason for the resurrection this morning we'll call the new reality. The new reality. See, Mary's grief here at this point is, is, is double. She's, she's, she's lost Jesus twice. She, she's lost him on the cross, and now she's lost him. She's lost his body, and they can't, his body is gone. And so he's lost now in that sense too. And, and Jesus speaks to her. Look at, at verse 15. He says, he says, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Mary's feeling loss here at this point. She, she, is, she is feeling heavy loss. You, you do life long enough, you, you know loss. We, we all experience loss. We lose people. Uh, we, lose, we lose relationships, perhaps. Uh, we, we lose things financially. Uh, we can lose health. We can lose, we can lose friendships through a misunderstanding. We know what it is to feel loss. A and whatever your loss that comes to mind right now, uh, think of it. Let Mary's tears be yours and see what the resurrected Jesus would say. Look down at verse 16. Uh, Jesus just says, Jesus said to her, Mary. He just says her name. And, and she, she hears his voice and she recognizes his voice and she just she goes and she just, she just falls at his feet hanging onto his ankles and, 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 just, and just won't let go of him. One more scripture reference here uh, this morning. One more passage, and it's in the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation here. And it's years and years later. Uh, Jesus' disciple John, he's an old man at this point. He's on this, this prison island. He's been banished to this prison island. And on this island, Jesus comes and, and gives him a vision which he records that we know as the book of Revelation. And, and part of what Jesus says to him uh, as he's receiving this revelation, Jesus says, do not be afraid. There's our saying again, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and look now, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. On Friday, I, I, read from, I read from this book. It's a book, Daryl Johnson, uh, that I've been reading uh, lately, and, and I love what he says here about, about this passage here in, in chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. He says that Jesus, that he let death take him captive, and then he burst out of the prison and carried away the prison keys. That, that Jesus burst out of prison and carried away the prison keys. Jesus goes, look, I have the keys. I have the keys of death. I was, I, I was dead and now I am alive. That, that, that I, I, I burst out of prison. I just didn't burst out of prison. Death couldn't hold me. He's saying, I also, I also have the keys. The enemy does not hold the keys. That Jesus holds the keys. The, the enemy, the enemy, we said Friday, we said the enemy has been cast down to earth. And, and the enemy is, is, is here and he's, he's, he's accusing and he's deceiving. He, he's out to steal, kill, and destroy, the Bible says. And, and the Bible the, it records in the Bible for us to, to, to resist him and he will flee. Jesus holds 
the keys. I just think that's so awesome. That's so powerful. Here this morning, later on, Jesus is going to say in, in Revelation 21 that, that he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. See, here's the new reality. A new earth, a new heaven and a new earth in our resurrected bodies with our Lord. That things right now are temporary. It won't last like this forever. This is temporary. Times like now. Times when it's hard. This is temporary. Jesus says, look, I have the keys. And he, he reveals this to John and, and, and he reveals it to you and to me. He says, I've got the keys. It won't be like this forever. Don't be afraid. So followers of Jesus, followers of Jesus, people who are, who are seeking, who, who have received him by faith, who are seeking to follow him, the Bible is clear that, that, that in, the, in the resurrection that we receive new life. We have this hope. Jesus is the first fruits. So don't live a life of fear. To, 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 don't, don't bring all your hard days forward into the present. Don't be afraid. The one who suffered and the one who died is alive, praise God. And he holds the keys for all eternity. Let that let that penetrate your fears. Let it penetrate your failures. Let it penetrate your tears this morning on Easter Sunday. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can share in your resurrection and that, and that the things of this world that can, that can drag us into fear, uh, Lord, that because you hold the keys of, of life, you, you, you hold the keys of death, uh, Father, that we have this incredible hope of a new heaven and a new earth. We, we, we thank you so much for this truth. We thank you so much, uh, Lord. Just pray that you would give us more and more understanding of what you've revealed. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, faultless because you are clothed in his righteousness, present you faultless, before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you this Easter weekend. Uh, blessings on your day and we'll see you soon.